All right, so wonderful good afternoon everyone. I welcome you to my YouTube channel. Um, I bring you a tutorial on fu uh, composite functions. That is how to find um, the domain of a function. Okay, the domain of a given function. So to those of you that will have questions, make sure that you inbox on this WhatsApp line and I'll be able to respond to you. So I have quite a lot of questions here with me and hope you'll be able to learn something even as I teach. To those of you that have not yet subscribed, make sure that you subscribe and you hit the like button. Now, the first question is saying, find the domain of the following composite functions. Then A, we have that particular function there. Okay, so now we want to find the domain. We want to find the domain of uh, that function there. Okay, we find the domain of that function. Now, they are saying that we find the domain of f plus g evaluated at some point x. So, how do I solve the first question? Okay, so to solve the first question, which happens to be f, okay, so f plus g being evaluated at some point x. So, the function of f of x is simply x uh, plus 2 plus the function of g of x is simply uh, x plus uh, 5 like this okay then from here from here we know that um, the domain of this guy because this is, a tra this is just a polynomial function expression or function whichever you may put it so okay. now since we know that this is a polynomial expression so meaning its domain is simply coming from negative infinity to positive infinity but then for this one for this one how do you find the domain you simply say x plus 5 must be greater than or equal to 0 therefore x um, uh, uh, must be greater than or equal to negative 5 therefore the domain for this one we we'll simply start from uh, neg 5 going up to some point positive infinity so now if we draw a line like this you draw a line of this kind here like this then you discover that we have negative infinity here we have positive infinity here but then we are going to have a negative 5 here like this we may have some zero here but then you discover that for this one, for this particular function, expression, it's, uh, that its domain is coming from negative infinity up to positive infinity, like this. We see open circles. But then for this one, it's coming from negative 5 up to positive infinity, like this. Okay? Like this. But then you discover that while these two are meeting, is simply at some point negative 5 up to positive infinity. Therefore, the domain for this particular function, the domain for this particular function will simply be from um, negative 5 to positive uh, infinity, like this, to positive infinity. So it will move like this. So this is how you solve uh, this particular question. This is how you solve this particular question. Then we get to the second question, which happens to be B. Now B is simply saying that f of x is equal to x plus 3 and g of x equals to that. Then we find f uh, over g being evaluated at some point at some point x. So what we're going to do here we are going to get the function of f of x, which happens to be x plus 3 over. Then we get the function of g, which happens to be x plus 2. But then we are going to deal with the denominator, where we are going to say x plus 2 must not equal 0. Okay? So then x is equal to x must not equal negative 2. So, because we know that if we put negative 2 where there is x, then this thing is going to be undefined. So, we need to find the point where this thing will be undefined. Okay? So, now, 
we discover that this function is only undefined at a point where x is negative 2. Therefore, its domain is simply coming from negative infinity, from negative infinity to some point negative 2, then union from negative 2, comma, to some point positive 2, like this. So this is the domain for this particular function. Okay, so this one is quite easy. You just find where this thing will be undefined and you exclude it. You put these brackets to simply exclude this particular number. We get to the second question. Now for the second question, all right, for the second question, they are saying, let f of x equal to 3x minus uh, 12 and g of x equal to that. Then we find the domain and the range of the following functions. Okay. Then, so we have, okay, we have f seco g being evaluated at some point x. Now, f seco g simply means that we get the function of f of x, which happens to be 3x minus 12. Then where there is x, we are going to put, where there is x, we are going to put the function of g of x. So now, we are going to say 3, then divided by, uh, uh, 3 divided by, then we put the function of f of, of, of g of x minus 12. Then we are going to find 3, the root of x minus 12, like this. But then we ask ourselves, what number such that uh, 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 if we put it in here to be undefined? So we are going to work out the radical. So automatically we know that when we are dealing with radicals, we simply have uh, uh, the root of x here when we're dealing with radicals like we did in the first place this is just the same as x must be greater than or equal to zero and therefore the domain for this particular uh, 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 function the domain for this particular function is just this one x is such that x must be greater than or equal to some zero then x must be a real a, a member of all real numbers okay then for the domain for the domain you just take this part because this is representing so for the range range simply means all values in the y-axis so for the range we are going to take this particular number and simply say that the range represented by y is such that y um, must be greater than or equal to negative 12 such that y must be a member of all real numbers then automatically you have found its range then we get to the next question now for the other question which happens to be b they are saying we find g f of x now for this one the, uh, it's just the same. They are simply saying we get the function of g of x and simply insert the function of f of x. So it will be 3x minus 12 like this. Then we just get whatever is in here. You get whatever is in here and simply uh, uh, introduce the greater than or equal to 0. Then it will be 3x greater than or equal to uh, 12. Then over 3, over 3. And therefore, you find that your x is simply a 4. Now, how do you find the domain? Since we are found for our domain, this one is, is going to be x is such that x must be greater than 4 and that x must be a member of all real numbers. So, this is quite simple and very interesting. Okay, then how do we find the range? The range is simply all values in the y-axis. So it will be y is such that y um, uh, uh, must be greater than 0 and that y must be a member of all values. Okay. But then you may ask me a question like why should y uh, 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 be greater than 0? Okay, why should y be greater than 0? The reason is to why we are, we are saying y should be uh, uh, greater than 0 is because whatsoever value 
of uh, y that we may put okay in this um, y is y greater than zero or let me try to prove this so we have something like this 3x minus 12 as you can see this thing is in the radical okay this thing is the radical right but then we understand that this is simply adding up to some zero so in the first place we, we, we put, I said that the negative 12, this negative 12 was representing a uh, uh, y, uh, a value that happens to be in the range, in the y, right? Like this. But for this particular one, you discover that uh, there was no number. No wonder I just put a zero because there was nothing there. And therefore, we are considering this zero as uh, part of those numbers that are going to be in the range sure you understand okay so this is how you find the range now we get to the third question okay we get to the third question now the third question is saying find the domain of f circle g where 3 over x plus 2 and d, uh, g of x equals to 4 now they are saying we find the domain we find the domain now we know that f circle g we are simply setting that function of uh of 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 we are setting the function of g where there is x in the function of f of x so now we have this function 3 over x plus 2 okay now for this one we can simply say x plus 2 must must not equal 0 then x must e must not equal negative 2 like this okay so therefore each domain is simply coming from um for this particular one the domain is simply coming from the point where it's going to be negative infinity to negative 2 to negative 2 union negative 2 to positive infinity like this but then you discover that in the other one in the other one we have g of x and then they are saying this is equal to 4 over x but then we know that if we put 0 this is undefined therefore we say this must not equal a uh, 0 okay this must not equal 0 now if this must not equal 0 then what is the domain of this particular uh, uh, composite function the domain okay so i can find the domain using this so i can say that uh, for the domain of this function, we will say that um, uh, the domain, okay, I'll put these brackets, you may, put, you may write them nicely, but for the domain or x values, this simply means that x will, will be such that x must not equal uh, negative 2, comma, x must not equal 0, but x must be a member of all row values like this okay or if you want you may get this part and simply insert it uh, uh, on this x then you solve you will still find the same thing you will still find the same answer so that is how you solve that particular question it's quite easy question four question four is very easy they are saying um for each of the following functions list its domain and range okay so we want to list the domain and the range from this so for the domain the domain simply means the values that are in the x okay in the x axis so we know that uh we know that okay so just point here okay so we know that this is x this is y and all x values means the domain all y values means the range so I'm going to put a zero here, then I'm going to put comma one, then I'm going to put comma three. Okay, so this is the value. This is the value of the domain. Then for the value of the range, the value of the range is going to be two, comma four, comma six. That's how we do for this one. Okay. Then for B, you just do the same. Okay, let's get to the last question. Now, the last question is simply saying, for the given function of, of G of X like that, and we have been given the function of F of X to be this, 
find g circle f and its domain and range okay so for this one it's a very simple question we will simply say since g circle f simply means we get some function of g uh, uh, which happens to be this minus 2 like this then while there is x we simply uh, insert the function of f of x so we are simply saying the root of uh, the, uh, of x squared minus 2 this and this will cancel will remain with x minus 2 like this now we know that this one is a polynomial expression and it may be equated to some zero therefore you discover that its domain is simply coming from negative infinity to simply some positive infinity okay and the same concept applies even for the range the range will also come from negative infinity to positive infinity like that okay now they are saying that we find its inverse we find the inverse of g of x so now to find the inverse of g of x since we have g of x equal to x squared minus 2 like this we may simply say y is equal to x uh, to the power 2 minus 2 then we simply um, uh, uh, say that this is going to be y plus 2 equal to x to the power 2 like this then we want to make x the subject so we simply say the root of two, uh, the root of x uh, squared the root of x will put, then we remain with x equal to the root y plus 2 then we can replace this thing with uh, 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 f inverse of x equal to then this is going to be while there is y, you put x, what, uh, then plus 2. So then you have found the inverse. So these questions were very simple, and I'm sure you've learned something, even as I have uh, uh, solved, uh, solved them. So if you have a question concerning any, any of this, just make sure that you inbox me and ask me, and I'll be able to respond to you. Thank you so much.